Tyler the Creator's new album begins with one of the most exhilarating beats of the year, buzzing with a drum break that feels perfect for that aggressive Tyler the Creator that we know to come in with a flaming rap verse, spitting bars and setting the scene for Ego, the most intimate album of his career thus far. Igor pulls the bass blocks out from our expectations of him as an artist like a Jenga tower, forcing us to reconsole our predictions of his trajectory, and instead let go of the hopes that he'll drop any hashtag bars on a project that deals solely with toxic and messy internal feelings of a relationship gone south, as well as North East west and the y-axis too, sure, why not? Jealousy seethes through this album like a poisoning colour, and it's only one hat away from being a full-on NERD album. It only makes sense that Pharrell appears on the closing track, but well before that numerous times, I'm under the impression that the pitched up voice could be him, or that four beat loop at the start of I think is a mark of Pharrell's presence. While it also picks up the influences of a synthesizer-driven, swaggery and sensual soul funk record directed by Pharrell, it initially seems to absorb the shortcomings too. Tyler's own falsetto voice is hard to define as a vocally trained one, and the kitschy instrumentation that buzzes and blossoms in awkward spots on tracks like What's Good or New Magic Wand reminds me of some of the horrendous lols on even such a seminal album as In Search Of. I suppose ultimately the difference is that, in spite of all of Tyler's technical shortcomings, regardless of whether you feel the need to argue that the brittle and vulnerable placement of Tyler's singing on Earthquake was an intentional choice or not, the songs are so endearing and soaked in such a strong, emotively shaken feeling that I don't care whether or not the music is mastered to a polished standard, or whether Tyler would accidentally hit the microtonal scale. The quality of songwriting crests above and beyond, whether it's the classic butterflies in the stomach lightweightedness of Earthquake, or their chafing bitterness on what's good, in which that answer is a stern and obvious nothing. It's also the one track where Tyler feels right to return to his anguished rapping persona. Tyler unpacks his experiences with a toxic relationship and the pains of realising that you've been sidekicked in an amount of detail that gives you TMZ levels of guilt. Tyler's own presence on this album is ambiguous. Half the time I have to question my own judgement as to whether who I'm really hearing is him or in a left field swoop, Kanye actually. In many moments it seems as if this album, despite focusing very closely on his personal relations with another romantic interest, has barely any presence from him, and is more about a collage of different voices and musical slivers that all add up to emulate that feeling of Tyler no longer feeling like the most important person in his own story. I certainly remember so many tracks feeling like they were missing any sort of vocal presence in general. In a way this did cause me to feel a disconnect with Igor, like I couldn't truly feel electrified by the story or the emotions. What I could feel electrified with were the peppered detail that evoke specific kinds of emotions. These all sound engineered specifically to emulate precisely what Tyler was feeling at the time. The cresting synth melody 34 seconds into running out of time couldn't be any closer to that feeling of having your heart swoon for somebody else. <laughs> even if it seems to be accompanied by a sporadic bass line that sounds like that hum the speaker input makes when you touch the end of it. The slurred and the nimble delivery of Playboy Carti's verse on Earthquake, followed by the chromatic descent of the pianos, sounds exactly like what happens when you're lost for words and are falling apart. On the contrary, the furious and frankly extreme new magic wand buzzes like a pounding headache, one so strong and red-faced with envy that murder even becomes a possibility in quite a disturbing manner. In the way that the song crescendos with the sour deadpan singing of Please Don't Leave Me Now, only to get busier and busier, heavier and heavier, before two minutes in, it all clears up and we're just left with a pinging siren as if Tyler's just stepped outside and all of that fury just cleared up. It's unsettling, honestly. After this moment, of near silence, Tyler returns onto the track with a much more cool-headed attitude. He delivers a verse that is much more grounded but still rooted in the toxicity that defines his romantic experience. And yet, on another face-slapping contrary, Gone Gone begins so energising and optimistic, but the glittering synths that sparkle after Tyler's off-key vocals just give you the sense that not everything is right just yet, and nothing has been settled. It's like waking up from a nightmare and getting out of bed and realising you haven't actually woken up and you're still in that dream. Your mind is just playing an evil trick on you. The album from that point onwards, funky and progressively smoother as it becomes, manages to sound like it's resolving itself, and yet very clearly it has not. And it would be foolish to think that anything resolves itself so quickly, if at all. Tyler finally admitting with progressively manic squeals on I don't love you anymore that well, he doesn't love you anymore, isn't the conclusion to the album given that the final track asks whether or not they're still friends. I don't think Igor was ever meant to feel like a fluid, unwrinkled experience. It just tends to jut out in weird spots and have the mastering level of burnt mints. A lot of the time when hearing music like this, you'd have to colour me unimpressed, but there is a blooming magic to Igor that keeps me returning, to the point where I have nothing but appreciation for its arrangements. I have to admit that I didn't like this album as much as I do now on the first listen. I certainly enjoyed what I heard musically, but I felt too 
too distant and stranded from every bit of emotion that Tyler wanted to engage a listener in. With further returns, I realised that the album is actually very evocative of the story in much more detailed ways. Little details in the music enchanted me and helped me realise that this album is far more inventive with how it evokes those feelings. It's distant, but I get it, which rounds out to about a, a 7 out of 10, the kind that probably nudges you and says, hmm, sounds like it should have been higher.